and welcome to Living in Color. Today we have Stefan Arino on today. And thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Tamara. Yes, thank you very much. So, um, I'd like to ask you how you got into what you did. Basically, real estate investing is, is basically where you started. Uh, well, I started out, I was a, a musician. I started with um, $1,200 of cash years ago. Okay. And I was a guitar teacher. I was living at my mom's house, uh, living on the couch. And I decided, you know, I was making $10,000 a year in income as a musician. I decided I wanted money. I decided I wanted to move out one day. I maybe wanted to own a car. Maybe wanted to afford to have a girlfriend or something like that. And I was tired of being poor. So uh, I started reading about real estate. I started reading a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It changed mm -hmm. my life. And, uh, you know, fast forward a couple of years later, and I've done quite well in real estate. Mm -hmm. Oh, good, good. And um, can you tell us a little bit um, about how you got into the business? You explained Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, but getting in from there, you know, twelve hundred dollars, and um, how did that roll into to to what you got into real estate investing? Because I, I know you do a few things, um, but can you tell us a little bit about how you got like into it? How do I get started? Well, I think a lot of people when they get started, they go to a seminar, or they read a book. So I saved up my money and took a seminar years ago, and you know they're not cheap. Uh, especially if you're broke mm. and I, I spent my money on a seminar. I started going to seminar after seminar after seminar because you know, you, you don't learn everything about a business in a weekend. That's right. Let's, let's be very mm -hmm. frank about that. It doesn't work like that. So I took, you know, a lot of seminars. I read a lot of books and finally I actually partnered up with six people and we went in six ways on a house and that was my first and last ever investment. You know, $1,200 of cash. Bang, that's all the money that I've ever put into real estate. All the other money I've ever used has been other people's money. Oh, wow. Okay, and when you say other people's money, what do you mean by other, like investors, uh, angel investors, kind of those things? Or are you grouping together and, and finding other friends and stuff like that? To, other to, people's money. So, yes. you know, it's typically equity investors, so people who want to make uh, double digit returns on their money. Mm -hmm. uh, I partner up with them and we buy houses. Nice, nice. And how long have you been in this business? Because I know you started pretty young when you when you got into it. Do you mind telling us how young you were when you got into this? Uh, uh, so I started when I was 20, 21, 22, around there. Wow. Uh, today I'm 29. I'm still holding on to that, still holding on to my <laughs> 20s. <laughs> but uh, 30's coming. <laughs> you can always be 29, trust me, being a woman. <laughs> we yeah. never, ex you, you know. Be 29 forever. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Great. And, um, how has, uh, not only investments, but you do flipping as well. How many flips do you think that you have done um, in the process of your career so far? Um, I won an award called Rich Dad Hall of Fame. Amazing. Congratulations. That was in 2014. And they had to do an, an audit of my deals. And I think my lawyer told me I'd done over 100 deals at his table. Oh my gosh. So that's, wow. my, that's what my lawyer said. Uh, I don't know what the exact number is because yeah. it's it's a lot mm -hmm. and it, it, you lose track of them after a while. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in a house yesterday we that we finished off in Winnipeg and I barely saw it. You know, I bought it, barely saw it, and I was in it with a student and it was all clean and finished and staged and, you know, my team, it just runs. The business just runs and mm -hmm. I don't really spend that much time keeping track of how many deals we're doing. With, right. It's a lot. Yes. And you actually teach students now how to do that type of business. And um, can you tell us a little bit about the, cor the course that you offer to, to, to people to get into this? Right. So what's happened, you know, after becoming successful in real estate and uh, publishing a couple books, people have been asking me, hey, how can I do this for me? You know, it's much like having a bakery. You know, I, I made a pie. Other people want to make pies too, or right. maybe they want to own their own bakery. <laughs> And uh, I get calls all the time from people that want to get into real estate. They want to get into real estate with none of their own money. And I've started a couple of businesses, some training businesses to help people do what I do. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people want to make more money in real estate. They want to have passive income or cash flow. They want to have windfall profits where they're getting big checks from flipping houses. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I train the right people. We usually qualify the people that 
we take on in our program because real estate's not for everybody. Right. It's it looks easy, but it's not as easy as it looks. And uh, you know, if I take someone on, I want them to be successful. Of course, of course. Now, a lot of people, um, the majority of people that are out there, think that an investment is buying a home and paying off their mortgage. Um, where um, I'm sure that you would disagree that um, you know paying off on a mortgage isn't necessarily an asset. So can you explain a little bit about um, buying a home and paying into a mortgage rather than an investment in flipping? Can you... Well, I think you're talking about the difference between an asset and a liability. You know, an asset is something that makes you money. That's right. And a liability is something that costs you money. Mm -hmm. So if you own your home that you live in and you're paying it off every month, that's not really an investment. That's just paying off a house. Right. Um, you know, it, if you do the math, I think you end up paying three times or four times the purchase price in your mortgage over mm -hmm. over the time of your life. So it's right. not really an investment, and when you adju mm -hmm. adjust it for inflation, you're not really getting ahead. If you start buying uh, you know, the right rental properties with cash flow, or if you flip properties the right way, you can make a lot of money doing that. But additional homes and additional properties, those are investments. Your own house is probably not that good of an investment. And right now we're in 2015, the Canadian real estate market and across all cities probably isn't going to go that much more up. It mm -hmm. might even go down in the future. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So you, your own home might not even be an investment. If you look at the United States, there's a lot of cities where it's better to rent than it is to own. Sure. And do you think that way? Because I across Canada, Toronto's market is is quite expensive. Not expensive, but uh, for the market that it is, I think it's one of the highest. It's um, very overvalued. Yes, definitely. It's, way overvalued. it's good for real estate agents. I mean, buying and selling and whatever that they're doing with it. But where would you suggest uh, anywhere in the world if somebody was to invest or, or buy a property? Where would you suggest people? Would it be in Canada? Would it be in the United States? Maybe over in Europe? Where would I you... like I like markets where the average Joe can buy a house and he works at the meat packing plant and his wife's a secretary and both of them have jobs and they buy a house and they work in the local area and they pay for the house with their jobs and it's a very value driven market. I like mm -hmm. value driven markets. Mm -hmm. um, I call Toronto or Vancouver or even Calgary a vanity market where people like you have Chinese investors coming in, yes. you have money from all over the world that comes here for any number of reasons and they don't care about the returns they're making. A lot of Chinese investors that come here or come to Vancouver just want to get their money out of the currency. Mm -hmm. They want to change currencies and they do it as a Forex trade. So those markets, uh, you know, you also got Las Vegas in that boat. You'd have a lot of California, um, New York, any of those markets where the people aren't working and living there mm -hmm. who are investing, I mm -hmm. stay away from those. I like the value markets. Like, you know, Winnipeg, for example. People don't think Winnipeg is a great city, but it's a great city to work in and live in and own a house in. Um, one of my mentors, he does deals in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. which again, that's not a glamorous town. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other cities that are good are, right now is uh, Kansas City, mm -hmm. Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, Dallas, none of those are glamorous towns, mm -hmm. but they're all good places where people have jobs and they work and they buy the house and they pay them pay off the mortgage and there's not some crazy Chinese investors coming in and right. sinking millions of dollars into homes and condos that they're never going to live in or see. Right. Understandable. Now I've dabbled in uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad and hope to make some investments worldwide within the next few years. Maybe I can take some of your, your teachings and, and go on and move on with it. What about buying properties, um, say on islands and um, you know fixing some small little rundown property on an island and then renting that out to say vacationers that are, that are coming through? What would you... Well, it's very, you got to know what you're doing. With real estate, <laughs> believe me, you can you can make a lot of money yes. if you know what you're doing and you can lose a lot of money if you mm -hmm. don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you know about the travel business and about vacationers and if you have an inside scoop on how to do that and how to make money, you can probably make money. Personally, I don't know anything about that business. And I'd stay okay. away from it. Mm -hmm. And that's the key with any business. If you know about, you know, if you, I was talking to your daughter, she knows about nails. She has a nails business. Mm -hmm. That's probably a smart thing for her. I don't know anything about nails, so right. I should never do a nails business. Um, I have a home staging business because we 
stage the homes we flip. So mm -hmm. I know about home staging. That's mm -hmm. a good business for me. Mm -hmm. Might not be a good business for anybody else. Right. And same with real estate. You know, if you know something about it, you can make money. If you don't know anything about it, uh, you can lose a lot of money. And that's why I think a lot of people seek education with real estate investing mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't know anything about it. When I started, I didn't even know what a mortgage was. Right. I knew mom and dad paid a mortgage and I knew that it stressed them out, but I didn't know <laughs> anything about mortgages in general. Right, right. Well, amazing. Thank you so much for your information. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what we have sitting beside us here? You yeah, have a uh, yeah. published author of two amazing books. Can you tell me a little bit um, about, um, I know Money, People, and Deal was the, the first book that you had come out with, um, and then Self Made. Mm -hmm. Self Made Millionaire mm -hmm. in, in the age of your 20s. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that, Stephanie. Um, well, Self Made is my second book, mm -hmm. and it's a story about my life. It's really a book about entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, people try to put me into the category of real estate, and you know I do real estate. That's true. Um, but Self Made is a book about entrepreneurship, and it's about starting out with no money and uh, having a big dream and having a desire and all the things that an entrepreneur has to go through. And I, it took me two years to write the book. It took me a lot of money to write the book uh, because I wanted to fold in the lessons into a story. So mm -hmm. it's all folded into a story. And uh, inside the book are the five secrets that transform ordinary people into self-made millionaires. So mm -hmm. if you want to know about um, becoming financially successful or becoming a, an entrepreneur, I think it's a good book for you. Amazing. Amazing. And I know that you come from a heart-centered place as well. And do you believe that coming from a heart-centered place within business um, is the way that businesses are going nowadays? Um, not so much, uh, you know, the money, the greed, the selling, all that kind of stuff. Do you believe that our society is becoming more authentic and more heart-centered in being in the entrepreneurial world? What does that mean to be heart-centered? Heart-centered, I believe, um, you know, you're giving from a place from your, your heart. You, it's not just all about sales and, and money and, you know, the typical um, way corporate businesses have done business before. It's coming more from a heart-centered place, being authentic, being who you really are, not having to tell the, the BS story of, uh, you know, to get a sale. Coming from a heart-centered Well, place. I think we live in a, a society, in a world now where it's not buyer beware it's seller beware right and the buyers in any market are smarter than they've ever been and they can smell bs faster than ever before right and they can write you a bad review on yelp or on urban spoon or on any rating site and mm -hmm. you're dead mm -hmm. so i think that authentic companies and authentic brands and authentic stories are more valuable today than ever before because the customers are smarter mm -hmm. and you know with smarter customers you got to do smarter things and you have to be authentic and you have to have a really really good um, real story like people are looking for real things that's right that's that's just what the customer wants and you know at the end of the day um, I'm an entrepreneur and I, I give the customer what they want mm -hmm. you know in, in the 80s I think you're talking about the 80s and the 70s that was a time where it was buyer beware and the buyers were very uneducated and ignorant and they had no idea what they were buying. They had no idea what price to pay. They didn't have the internet. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we live in a different world. I'm not sure if it's heart centered, but you know, the, the buyers are definitely smart Yes. and you can't, uh, you can't screw around with the buyers. You have to be very, very open with them and transparent and they want, uh, they want good value and they want authenticity. Exactly, exactly. I know um, I, I follow you through social media and some of the travels that you do as well. And um, I, I've seen that some people have called you the Wolf of Wall Street, the, the new Wolf of Wall Street. What do you, what's your partake on that? Well, I, I, I think somebody called me the new Jordan Belfort. Uh, Jordan <laughs> okay. Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street is the persona that stole a lot of money from investors. So right. I don't know if I want that. <laughs> on my name, no, but the Jordan be. Belfort, well, Jordan yes. Belfort, it's a compliment to me. Jordan Belfort is a great speaker. He's probably the best salesman I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Very technical salesman. Um, and you know, he's touring the world, uh, with some pretty big promoters speaking. So I was pretty happy to be compared to Jordan Belfort. I actually really, uh, 
I think he's really got his game together for speaking and selling. Now, I don't know if his ethics game is together, but that's that's a whole other thing altogether. Some people call me the Wolf of Winnipeg sometimes. <laughs> and that's kind of a fun thing, but it's I think it's just for fun. I don't think there's anything real there to back it up. Well, good. You're, you're such a real person, and I, and, I, and I thank you for coming on the show today and traveling all the way from Manitoba to be here in Toronto with us today. So thank you. If you could give um, <clears throat> our audience a, a few tips into real estate investing, what uh, what kind of tips would you would you give them? Well, I think the biggest tip is you have to get educated. You know, if you want to be in real estate, if you want to make money with anything, if you want to get into any business, you have to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So you know, get educated. That's read books, attend seminars get a coach, get a mentor. Mm -hmm. Those are the three ways that people get educated. It's going to cost some money, but you know, I, I think they used to say in the military, an ounce of sweat will save a pint of blood. Nice. So you can make a small investment into some education. You can save yourself a lot of bleeding later. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely. I think uh, the best investment is being an entrepreneur is investing in yourself first. Mm -hmm. um, definitely. Um, and uh, let's see, what else could we cover with you, Stefan? While you're here, um, what has been your biggest accomplishment do you find uh, throughout your business? Is it really um, getting into uh, the real estate investments, the flipping, maybe the books? What, what has been your biggest accomplishment, personal or in business? Well, I think the biggest accomplishment for any entrepreneur is, is lasting power and staying power. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been doing what I'm doing here for seven years now. And it's, you never, you never make it, mm -hmm. you know, this book says self-made million on the front, but that doesn't mean you made it, right. uh, more money, more problems. You get bigger, you make more money. Now you got bigger problems. You have, mm -hmm. you know, a person who's a millionaire or a billionaire has the same money problems. A person with a thousand dollars or a thousand or a hundred air has, except the, the numbers are bigger. Right. Um, I think the biggest accomplishment for me is to be able to survive and uh, stay in the game this long. And, you know, if you speak to me in three years or five years or 10 years, I'll still say, still survive and still here. <laughs> you know, I, I have a, a list of people to be, and one of the people on the list of people to be is Madonna, and she's the only woman on the list. <laughs> But she's on the list because she stayed relevant for so long. Right. And in pop music, for her to be around in pop music for however long, that's like a million years. Mm -hmm. you know, she's, been, she's been a woman. Well, first of all, women don't last long in pop music. <laughs> they last a couple of years. That's right. And she's been relevant for that long. And I think that my accomplishment so far is to stay around and stay relevant. And um, going forward, that's going to be my biggest goal and accomplishment. It's something that always has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, where can people find you um, to, to inquire about your books or your services or any, where, where can they find you? Okay, well, if they want to get the book Self-Made, they can go to <laughs> selfmadeconfessions.com and uh, we do have the book, we have audio books, all sorts of things they can get. And uh, my personal website is stefanarnio.com, so it's S-T-E-F-A-N-A-A-R-N-I-O.com. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming all this way, and I appreciate having you on as a guest, and all the best in the future. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you.